Alright guys, 20th tutorial, real quick tutorial. I finally typed all this code and finished up our program. See, look at all this. You really didn't want to have to sit there and watch me type all this, did you? But anyways, now that I typed it, I want to show you guys what I did and uh, how it works. The first thing we did is we synthesized all of our outlets. I mean, this is nothing new, just housekeeping stuff. And after this, the really first thing we did is we called this method called will animate rotation to interface orientation and go ahead and start typing that and all your parameters are going to pop up just keep everything good by default and what this method is it's a built-in method and what we just did is well we inherited it from our parent class and we needed to overwrite it so this method by default gets called after you rotate your iPod touch or iPhone and what it does is it looks at the interface and it pretty much what it does is it looks at the orientation of how you're holding it and depending on how you're holding it um, displays your objects a certain way so I mean by default it has all your default settings of course but if you override it you can manually type in the exact location of where and when you want to position each object so what we did is we made one if statement if the orientation is portrait that means if you're just holding it up and down like you were talking on the phone what you need to do is you need to change each frame and put it in a specific location now each button has a property called a frame and a frame is pretty much the container that holds that object in this case the button so you always want your frame to be the same size of your object and remember ours were 125 by 125 this is the last two things you need to draw the first two things are the location on your screen so this first one is 20 pixels across 20 pixels down draw a frame that's 125 wide by 125 tall and by the way the CG rectangle make is we're going to be getting into drawing later but CG means core graphics and whenever you make a CG object it pretty much just draws something on screen so what we did is we pretty much drew a rectangle I mean you couldn't actually see it, of course as invisible but it pretty much was a container aka frame to hold the button so by default when you're holding your phone straight up and down we drew each frame pretty much giving it coordinates of where we want our button to go and this else statement right here this is what this means alright by default if the orientation is equal to holding it straight up and down then go ahead and draw it appropriately else if you're holding it sideways go ahead and redraw them so I mean so they're standing next to each other instead of overlapping you can pretty much draw them anywhere on the screen you can even draw them to make a shape of a hot dog if you want but anyways since we didn't have upside down remember in our um, properties we can never hold it upside down so this handles the orientation if it's being hold straight up and down this handles it if it's being holding in landscape and remember we can't even hold it upside down we didn't specify those attributes so we don't even have to worry about that so after I pretty much overrode this method right here and called an if statement to handle how you want to draw the objects and when you want to draw them the only other things I did is set all of our outlets equal to nil. Uh, this is just to free up memory. We'll be talking about this later when we talk about different views. And we also released all of our buttons because remember we uh, retained them. So then we need to do uh, release them when we were done with them. So um, again, this is just memory stuff down there. You don't really need to know about that. I mean, you do need to know about, it, but you don't. So check this out. I'll give you guys one example. Let me go up and right now we're holding it in portrait so check this out this button number one right here is 20 pixels over 20 pixels down and it is 125 wide and 125 tall so this button number two is 175 pixels over 
20 pixels down and of course 125 125 we didn't change that for anything so now let's go ahead and put hardware rotate left and see what we got now well now let's go ahead and look at button 2 button 2 right here is in the bottom left that means it's 20 pixels over 155 pixels down and 125 by 125 because you know that's just the size of the button and how we reposition all these buttons to make sure that they all fit on the screen next to each other besides um, instead of overlapping we just pretty much figured out how wide our iPhone screen was and we pretty much just you know went through this stuff you probably need a calculator in your hand to figure out all this stuff but this is uh, where you pretty much position everything to make sure it just fits nicely on the screen and uh, yeah that's pretty much it I mean it's pretty self explanatory just want to show you guys the key thing is this is the method that you need to pass in and to interface orientation set this equal to whatever orientation you're using and then the conditions is how you want your objects to display so if you have any questions just go ahead and uh, ask me on my forum the link is below in the iPhone development section and also I posted all the source code for this so you don't have to you know uh, keep rewinding it and watch this story you can just go ahead and copy all of my source code post it in your Xcode and watch it run and once you do it'll make a whole lot more sense so for now I just wanna I mean I don't really want to do anything right now except eat pudding but thank you guys for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe and in the next tutorial we're gonna be going over multiple views that means a program that has more than one screen we haven't done yet it's going to be super awesome. I'm more excited for it than I've ever been before in my entire life. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.